Well, it has now been over four months since the start of the armed conflict between rival military factions in Sudan, and there is still little hope for an end to the fighting. In a rare televised address, the head of Sudan's military on Monday accused the rival RSF paramilitary force of committing war crimes under the false pretense of restoring democracy. Earlier this month, rights group Amnesty International actually accused both sides of committing war crimes, including massacring civilians as well as mass sexual assault. For more, Mathilde Vu joins us on the program. She is the advocacy manager for the Norwegian Refugee Council in Sudan. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Mathilde. Can you perhaps start by giving us a roundup of where the humanitarian situation stands now over four months in? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, well, after four months, I have to say it's it's really a catastrophic uh, situation. We have people dying every week because of the violence. Over the weekend, more than 100 people actually died in South Darfur. Two weeks ago, an entire town in West Darfur was completely destroyed, burned to ashes, with thousands of people having to flee and flee across Chad to also a very, very difficult and horrendous situation. And really, like, it's heartbreaking situation everywhere, in Darfur, in Khartoum, in South Kordofan. And on top of that, humanitarian needs, they're just um, reaching records and really, really sinister records every week. We have uh, more than six million people who are really on the brink of, of famine right now, and more than half of the population that is, that is hungry um, because of, of these atrocities. Now, the situation has, of course, been difficult for humanitarian workers as well. Do they have sufficient access to some of the hot spots in the fighting? And what are some of the most urgent needs on the ground? Um, sadly, the, the answer is no. Um, humanitarian actors, my, my colleagues, who also, by the way, have, have also lost everything. Many of them have left their home and lost you know, relatives and so on. And they really are trying their best to reach people in need especially people who are displaced, but in places like Khartoum, in places like Darfur, where people are still dying on the, uh, on the violence, basically, there's been very little, if not nothing, that actually has managed to reach because of violence, but also because of a bureaucratic impediment. They're really like slowing down the response in a moment where we really don't have any time to waste. Now, Darfur, which, of course, uh, saw a genocide in the early 2000s, has seen an uptick, unfortunately, in ethnic violence since the start of this latest conflict. How did that element, again, uh, seep into this fighting? Yeah, the, you know, the, there were signs before this, uh, before this uh, April 15 war that Darfur was never, never you know, uh, uh, the end of the story. It's been since 2020 and since basically the departure of the peacekeeping force that civilians are being targeted. And most, most of the time, uh, civilians of African descent. And now since April 15, we've seen that completely escalating. Um, we've seen mass graves, for example, in West Darfur that are, um, that have like bodies of children and women and were mostly from a Masalit, uh, Masalit ethnicity. And the problem is that there's there's nothing being done at the moment to to come to come and to 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 mediate this type of um, uh, of atrocious, atrocious uh, violence. There's nothing that actually support local uh, local peace agreements and efforts. So this is really I have to say we we might even see something worse in the coming months. Now, over the past four months already, Mathilde, as you kind of hinted at earlier, this conflict has, of course, forced uh, millions of people to flee their homes. It's left thousands dead. It's seen war crimes committed on both sides, according to rights groups. Has the international community's engagement with this conflict uh, seen decreased mobilization? It's not enough. It's not enough at all. I mean, we kept on saying never again when we talked about Darfur in, uh, 20 years ago. I want to see this is happening again, as you said, atrocities, rape being used as the weapon of war, um, you know, uh, maybe a famine coming up. Uh, and the international community, honestly, is not doing enough. Um, there should be more political effort to try and mediate uh, between the parties to the conflict. There should also be more, uh, more solidarity, more international solidarity. Right now we have uh, four million people displaced, one million have crossed uh, the country and who are like in, in 
very terrible situation in, in Chad, for example, in South Sudan. These are countries that have absolutely not the resources to actually, you know, support uh, all those refugees. And sadly, both for Sudan and the refugee crisis around, uh, the, the, the support, the, the humanitarian funding is extremely low. It's, it's half of the needs. And honestly, this is not enough compared to other crises that we've seen, for example, like Ukraine. We should have the same level of, uh, of attention. To what do you attribute the lack of attention? It's far away. Uh, it seems like uh, an old story. It's four months into the crisis and people seem to have already forgotten. I, I don't forget, my colleagues don't forget that a week ago, uh, one of their relatives died, you know, like, um, I think there's this distance that is happening and also the fact perhaps that it is seen as too complex. Um, and, you know, it's been neglected for such a long time. So then it's not the first time that it's been neglected. It's been four or five years that it's been completely under the radar of everybody. But what people do not understand is that it's more than Sudan. It's a regional crisis and it's, 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 it's the, the East Africa and perhaps the Sahel that is at stake as well. Indeed, certainly has worldwide uh, repercussions. Mathilde Vu, that's unfortunately all we have time for. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me.